Hi, my name is Scott Moore. I'm the owner of Bellevue Fine Art Reproduction, and today I'm going to show you how we do, uh, how we create gallery cloned edges for our canvas uh, prints. If you're not familiar with gallery edged canvases or what that means, a gallery edged canvas has part of the image that you've printed wrapped around the edges of the canvas, so there's no need for reframing. Um, and when you hang it on the wall, you see the edges, or you see the uh, image of the canvas extended around the edges. The way that we do that, uh, with both photographs and paintings, and we'll show you an example of each here, is we take two inches around um, all sides of the image, and we select it with the marquee tool, and we duplicate it onto another layer, and we flip it around so you've got a mirror image of the image that you'll be printing. However, when we do that, you can see as we do it, as we as we flip the image around uh, to fill in the edges, that we have a, a mirroring effect, um, or a, what's called a butterfly effect, where um, everything gets flipped, and some things you don't want to be extended around the edge there, things that would look unnatural, like that wing. I know that many places that do uh, gallery edge canvases simply flip the image with no regard to um, what it looks like on the edge, just as long as there's you know image on the edge. However, what we do is once we've mirrored the image, we go around manually with uh, Photoshop using the clone tool and other tools, and we go and we erase things and clone things out that would look unnatural. Um, that look like they shouldn't be there. So that we really trick the eye um, into believing that that image naturally wraps around that canvas. Um, there's another little piece of the wing there. We're going to get that and take that out. There we go. Um, this is really important to making a, a, a good looking canvas, one that looks natural uh, as it's hanging on the wall. Um, otherwise, if your viewer starts to notice that, that mirroring or that butterflying effect, um, it really starts to, look, starts to look sort of funny. So we do little things like we, uh, we go and extend the leaves um, and, you know, we really sort of paint the edges around the canvas. We really start using Photoshop to paint um, things out um, that we don't think will look good when we stretch it. Another thing that this does is it makes it easier for the person stretching the canvas, um, actually, because when you're stretching a canvas um, that has a very defined edge, you have to be very, very careful. Uh, and canvas is malleable. Um, it does uh, stretch you know, as you stretch it across the stretcher bars. Um, and so you have to be very, very careful to get everything just exactly edge to edge when you're stretching. Whereas we, when you have a well-cloned gallery edge, um, you've actually got about an eighth of an inch of leeway as you're stretching the canvas. Um, and you don't have to be so exacting as you stretch it. You can see here we're going to do the same thing with uh, painting that we did with... Um, that we did with the photograph in the previous example. Um, paintings uh, require a little bit more or different care than does a photograph. You're working with um, someone's strokes and as you extend the canvas area around you can see here, here once again we've got two edges all the way around that we're going to mirror and flip. Um, you really have to be careful uh, with the artist's strokes. Um, you want to make sure that when you um, extend the pattern to be more natural, um, that you're very careful to use their strokes in cloning um, and to do so naturally and in a way that doesn't affect the face of the canvas. So you maintain the integrity of the, the artist's work um, on the face of the canvas and yet still are able to clone out the edges to make the edges um, look painterly or painted. This particular canvas uh, we chose as an example because um, it, it, it's actually very difficult 
because of all the circular patterns. Um, it has a, a, a lot of pattern to be mirrored, a lot of pattern to be cloned out um, in order to make it look good. Looking at this at first glance, you might think that this would be uh, an impossible painting to clone um, because it is so complex. However, it's really um, not all that complex at all, uh, well, at least for us, and within a very short time we're able to clone out a painting like this. Um, it probably takes us about 10 or 20 minutes um, to clone something this complex, and that's something we normally um, don't charge for. Uh, especially for larger pieces that are um, a little bit more expensive. So back to the um, cloning here, we can see um, what, we, what we have to do is, is we really have to uh, pay attention to the direction um, that the artist has made their strokes. And it does, you know, it does require a little bit of work um, as you try and recreate their strokes. And you have to go through with your clone tool you see we're using our clone tool and really resample quite a bit um, from different areas of the painting um, so you're constantly resampling and grabbing different strokes to work with there extending that stroke and, and uh, really using the artist's own strokes and own painting to extend so now that we finished that we're going to rename the file and um, we're going to save it as a new name so that we don't overwrite the original artwork and we keep a separate copy um, of the image that we've cloned out for a canvas. One of the things to remember is that when we clone edges for a canvas like this, it's very specific to the size um, that you've ordered. We can't just go take that cloned um, image and, and go create different sizes. We, each, for each size, we actually have to go and, and do all the cloning all over again. And so there you have it. Uh, you have a finished gallery wrapped canvas. You can see the edges will be there and the strokes will look natural as they wrap around and it's ready to print.